A while back I did a video on adding I2C drivers to the Raspberry Pi kernel for 9Front. I did that and at first to access the sensors on the Raspberry Pi Sense app and then went on to do other sensors. I2C was invented years ago by Philips and it's used to talk to various devices added to circuit boards. Uh, your phone likely uses I2C to talk to the accelerometer. Uh, there are variations on it too, like uh, SM bus used in PCs or the generic version called two-wire interface. Uh, in the case of the Raspberry Pi, the CPU is made by Broadcom, and they call their version Broadcom Serial Controller. But in the meantime, someone has added a portable I2C device file system to 9Front. So now I will rewrite the old driver from Miller's Pi kernel, uh, to work with 9Front's I2C file system. In the portable kernel code directory, there is a I2C.h file, um, and this contains uh, various data structures and common functions used by the I2C system. So we have this I2C bus and I2C dev that hold various things. Uh, most of the action is going to be going on in this dev i2c.c file. So when it comes to talking to an i2c device, uh, the parts you need to look for are how they are read and written to. So if we're going to write to one here, this is uh, what gets called. Um, so this right here will cover Oops, wrong one. This is the one we're looking for. All right. So this is actually what gets called when you access files in the sort of I2C uh, file system. Um, so this covers both writing to the control file and the data file. Uh, and this is for any time a read is called. So I2C write takes some uh, pretty standard arguments uh, that basically all read and writes do. We have this uh, chan here. This holds data about the file being accessed. This void data pointer here. Um, this is either data, this will hold, you know, a uh, pointer to the data being written in, or in the case of read where it wants the data read back to. And uh, length is how much is going in or out. And offset is if you're uh, writing to a file and rather than write to the beginning of it, you can offset to some other point inside of it. Um, and uh, the I2C drivers um, do something interesting with the offset. So that'll come up a bit later. And we should backtrack a bit to open. So keep in mind, open, write, and read are all part of 9P, the 9 protocol, and everything in Plan 9 systems talk using 9P. Um, but these functions don't have to be mapped to the classic notion of accessing files and storage. You can make whatever code you want, handle any incoming open, read, or write request. Um, so in the case of uh, open here, uh, we aren't opening a file on a storage device. What open does here is uh, use this function uh, right here. So it basically it's going to use information held in Chan to figure out what exact device um, you are trying to open. Um, and then sticks a pointer to that in aux here inside Chan. All right, let's get back to right here. Um, so for the case of write, it's going to set one of these I2C dev structures. It's going to set that by pulling in from aux. So you open a file when you write to it, that's in here. And now it knows the dev structure associated with that. Um, let's see. And from here, it's going to uh, set some stuff and then come down and call I2C send. So now in send here, we can see 
instead of the chain, we get the device, we get the data, we get the length, but instead of offset, it's now called address. Um, and what we're going to do here is we set up this packet of a certain size. We run this put address thing, which is up here. So again, we pass it the device, if it's being read, that packet, and the address again. And what it's going to do is it's going to check inside the uh, dev structure here to see if we're dealing with a 10-bit address. If it is, it's going to require two 8-bit bytes from packet, and it'll fill in the address for the device. 10-bit isn't used very often, so it's more often than not, you're going to have a 7-bit address, which will go in the first packet. Um, and it will also set the read or write bit. And if there is a number of sub addresses set, it will then pull in from the offset here, which is now called adder, and put those into the next packets for however, however many there are. Um, yeah, for a number of dev adder, and then it'll set each one eight apart. So a little detour on why things work on a I squared C bus. Um, so I2C has two wires. It has a data and a clock. Um, all data is sent down the data wire um, and the clock pulses on the clock line are used to know when you're reading, um, when you are to read a one or zero off the uh, data line. Um, this data sheets for a, a APDS 9960, which is like a, a light and proximity sensor, but it has some nice little charts here on how I squared C stuff works. So when communication will start with your computer, it'll send a start condition. It'll send the address for the device it wants to talk to. And since that's seven bits, we have one extra bit and that last bit will be for read or write. Uh, writes zero, reads one. It'll send that. If there's a device out there with that address, it'll acknowledge back. Um, you then send um, the next part. And so for a, a straight write, this is pretty straightforward. You send the address, you send a command or register address or sub address, whatever you want to call it, to the device. Um, it acknowledges it again, and then you send whatever data you're going to put into there. Um, when you're done, you send a, a stop condition. Um, for reads, you send the address with the read bit set. The device will acknowledge and start sending however much data it needs to send until it's done, in which case the uh, computer will then send a stop um, condition. Um, and if you're doing both, yeah, you do a start, address, write whatever you want, do another start address with a read bit set, and then wait for your data to come back. So uh, this sensor happens to use the common 8-bit command size, but um, some will use 16 uh, bits, so that would be 2 bytes. Um, and so that's why 9Front needs to know how big sub addresses will be. Um, and so, yep, that's basically what it is. It's just going to be sending little 8-bit packets down the line um, with either a read or a write request. So when it comes to plan 9 or 9 front, um, these sort of operations can be do, done in one of two ways. Um, you can do a write request, which will trigger the send, and then a read request, which will trigger receive. So you can write your command that you want to get back data from and then wait and do a receive on it or you can do it with the um, sub address set um, and that will also get passed along and say a read request so you'll that'll automatically in your driver you should write it so that it will do uh, a write with the offset and then do the read to send back to i2c receive here So that's all actually handled by this bus I2C bus IO. So that sends the device, the packet, 
and then in this case it's going to be a length with a zero um, and then down here you actually send two lengths and that is explained here we go in here so that's going to be your output length and your input length and so i2c send will send a length that includes the length of the address packet plus whatever data you're writing if it's a write you'll still send an output length of at least the address going out and then however much input there is if there's a sub address with a write it'll be the address plus whatever sub address once you need to write to the device and then whatever length of data you're expecting back um so i2c bus io here does some very sanity checks and then calls basically a function pointer um, that's set in bus and that's actually set by your driver so i'll do another little tangent here uh, as i was putting everything together for this video i had to talk with some of the other folks um, at Ninefront. And uh, they made a change to this dev i2c file here. Um, originally, uh, bus io here would not send dev, but it would send bus. Um, bus io does have information on, so it does have, you know, importantly, these pointers, which are set by your driver for your system on a chip or whatever you're doing. Um, and obviously you need that, but it wouldn't send this information. So they changed it. So instead of sending bus, you send I2C dev, which already includes a link to the bus that that device is on. So that way you now can get to the, whether it's a 10 bit address, what the address is, what your sub address lengths are and all that other good information. Um, so if you want to follow along at home um, you'll want to run a sys update to make sure you pull down the latest version of uh, dev i2c um, and yep you'll need that um, one of the other sort of quirks is the reason there is this is that um, a lot of devices actually have multiple i2c buses so you might have multiple buses on the raspberry pi there's it technically has uh, more than one but there's only one actually wired to the pins that you can access so um, the driver will actually only do a thing for one uh, bus and next i should bring up my kernel code then All right, so this is, I basically just made a copy of the kernel, put in a directory in my home directory here. Um, and this is sort of a good way to, if you want to mess around with kernels, this is probably the best way to do it. So my advice is uh, don't go messing with the actual stock kernel files. You make a new directory in your home directory, copy those files over. And then when you want to, you bind this over the uh, stock uh, kernel directory then run make um, and build it like that and then that way if you do mess something up at least you aren't actually messing up the uh, stock kernel that comes with the system um, so the only things i really had to change were the configuration file to make sure that I'd actually put in a i2c device and then properly set up my driver file and that is right here So I wanted to use Miller's code because I knew it worked. Um, and so I made as few changes to it as I really needed to. Part of it included stuff that's already in the uh, the portable dev i2c stuff. So I just cut that out. Um, at the bottom, I had to add this little bit here. This gets called it boot and um, basically sets, um, you know, registers this uh, device with the system since we only have the one i2c bus 
for the Raspberry Pi. It gives it a name, a speed, um, a link to a controller data structure that's used internally for this driver, um, an initialization function that can be called at start, and then the I.O. function for any time a uh, read or write is done to the Raspberry Pi's I squared C bus. Um, so here's the I.O. function. Um, a lot of it still has some of the same issues that Miller's had, so it does not do 10-bit addressing. Um, and I had, you know, his came with different sort of uh, arguments, so I had to map those to other ones. It helped changing the uh, um, this to a device so that we could just pull in the, uh, the address instead of having to read it out and shift it out of the first data packet. Um, so I'm still checking though for the first data packet to see if this is a 10 bit address. There's a standard sort of, uh, a reserved sort of bit system for what a 10 bit address would start with. And I check for that. And if it's 10 bit, we just fail out. Um, and then I basically check to see, um, if we're being probed, because there's a probe routine that runs at the beginning. Um, and I've been having an issue with the Pi here in that it doesn't like to do the standard probe, which is basically to send an address packet with the right bit set to zero. Um, and if that device is on the bus, it should still send an acknowledgement, even if we're not doing any writes afterwards. Um, but uh, the Pi is saying um, that it never gets an acknowledgement on anything. It throws an error. So for now, I'm just saying that everything is on the bus so that at least um, nine front will actually populate the directory with files. And then later I can pick the one that I need and write to it. Um, and then basically goes through and does a lot of this sort of stuff here. So... Um, this would make a little bit more sense if we had like a, a data sheet for the insides of how the uh, I squared C device works. But I've already tested this before and demonstrated it. So I know this code roughly works. It was mostly an exercise in making sure that 9front was passing um, the information um, to it that it expected. So now I guess it's time to test this. All right, I got the uh, video pie loaded up here with the uh, new kernel. Um, so I'm going to be doing this test with the um, that uh, APDS 9960 um, sensor. It's like this combination light proximity gesture sensor thing that's been used in phones. Um, and it has an option to send a command to it um, that will return an ID number. So that's a nice, easy little test to do. So since my driver still has a bunch of prints in it from the kernel, I don't want those to spam all over the screen. So I'll cat dev k print. And then since I don't have uh, the I squared C device, uh, kernel device mounted, um, uh, at boot, I'll have to do that manually. That's the capital J, and I'll put it in dev. So now, if I check there, I can see they're all there as far as the uh, K prints. So there's a bunch where it just detected that it was probing for 10 bit addresses. But you can see here it just went through every possible address probing for it. Um, and since the Raspberry Pi seemed to have a problem handling the, the way probes are being done, I just went ahead and said that every 7-bit address is accessible. Um, so I have a couple commands I already wrote. So the first one here is going to send a write with that ID register address and then do a read command and put back what it reads and sure enough we got that a b so yep that does match 
what the data sheet says. So we have a uh, successful read there. Now the next is uh, this one, which will test it, but it'll just do one read request using um, the command as an offset. I had to reshoot this part here because um, doing the test for checking if sub addressing working, I did it wrong, but it still doesn't work. So I had to remember to actually set a sub address and a size just to be sure. Um, but when running it, I did not get back AB, I got back C2. So definitely um, got something messed up there. Anyway, on to something a little bit more interesting. So I got a couple of these little LCD displays from some company called GeekPie. It's geek with three E's. Um, it has a rather complicated way of talking to the LCD. Um, so it's pretty decent test of how well the driver works. Um, so I happened to write a little program. At first I was just going to have one that just uh, dumps some stuff on the screen, but then I decided to do a proper file system one. So I've already done a the bind here and now i'll run my lcd fs and we can see on the k print here it did some stuff and on the screen it got cleared so it had some little black bars on it and now they're gone if i go to here i have my little file and i can echo stuff to it And it appears on the little screen. So that'll probably be my next video is actually going through and turning this into a proper file system that you can write stuff to. If you want to have like a little extra LCD display on your Raspberry Pi or something else, I'll probably be doing the um, uh, I squared C drivers for the MT7688 also, so that you know you could wire up like uh, a Wi-Fi router that had its own little display on it. So. In the meantime, have fun.